Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday and welcome to our commercial MLS training. My name is Robert Rodriguez with Elite Ocean View Realty. I want to welcome all our guests here today and, of course, those that are part of our team. We are going to have an interesting class today um, discussing commercial MLS, how to find properties in the MLS that are for commercial. Also, we're going to discuss... Um, you know, uh, researching commercial properties using IMAP and even RPR, how to analyze investment properties that are commercial inside of RPR. Guys, if you have any questions, please feel free, ask questions, unmute yourselves, and I will answer all of your questions. Or if you want to type your questions in the chat, I will also monitor the chat. We are recording our session. As always, you can find all of our recordings inside of our YouTube channel. Take a look on the screen. This is our YouTube channel. If you guys take a look inside of the chat, I will go ahead and share with you right now our YouTube channel link. All right, guys. So all of our recordings every Tuesday, every Thursday when we have a training, we will post our recordings inside of our YouTube channel. And there it is. And I did share this uh, channel with you inside of the chat. All right, so being a realtor, of course, allows us to work both residential and commercial here in South Florida. Now, with your regular realtor membership with the Miami Association of Realtors, you can participate in both residential and commercial. All right, now, if you take a look at my MLS, of course, you'll see on the upper left corner that I have a commercial MLS membership. Now, that's an additional fee that you would pay the Miami Realtors to get some additional commercial resources. Now, you don't need to be a commercial member in order to work commercial properties, all right? So I just wanna make that clear, that just because I have the South Florida commercial MLS logo and not the Miami Realtors logo, all right? It doesn't mean that you guys cannot work commercial properties. It just means that our my MLS is slightly different than yours. All right. But everyone here has the ability to search commercial properties, research commercial properties and build presentations for commercial properties. All right. So the one main difference that you'll notice on my MLS versus those of you that have strictly a residential MLS is that I do have a separate residential search. And a separate commercial search. The rest of us, everyone with a regular MLS membership, you have just one search and everything is located under that one search. All right. So I'm going to transfer over here to commercial search and you guys will see pretty much exactly what you see under search. After you get past the residential properties, then you have what's called multifamily income. All right. These are residential multifamily income, your duplex your triplex, your fourplex, all right? So between two and four units, it is not considered commercial. It is considered residential multifamily. However, it is under my commercial search. CLD, this is commercial land. If anyone is searching for industrial land, agricultural land, any type of commercial zoned land, you're going to find it under CLD. COM is commercial improved. This is all commercial properties. So if you're looking to lease an office space, a warehouse, a restaurant facility, or purchase any of those properties or more and more, you're going to find it under COM and that is commercial improved. All right. And then the last one we have is business brokerage. If anyone here has a client looking to purchase a business, Perhaps you have a client that's looking for a daycare or they're looking to purchase a liquor store business. You're going to find it under business brokerage. All right. So we are going to cover all of these in today's class. And then we're also going to transition a little bit into IMAP and RPR towards the latter part of the class. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with your residential multifamily. Of course, guys, if you have clients that are looking for a duplex, a triplex or a fourplex, you're gonna find it here under multifamily. Notice on the left in type of property, we have your duplex, your fourplex and your triplex. All right, so if we're looking for a fourplex, we're gonna go ahead and select fourplex. Now keep in mind guys, 
The MLS is a data entry database. That means that we are relying on the realtor who entered the listing to enter it correctly. There are times we search inside a fourplex and we'll see a six unit building. A six unit building does not belong in this property type, right? It belongs in a regular commercial search. Anything over four units, five units plus, it all belongs inside a regular commercial search. All right, so right now we're looking at uh, four plexes under multifamily and in the entire MLS right now without entering any more criteria, there are 231 listed multifamily properties. All right, if I go and I click on Miami-Dade County, that's going to bring it down to a total of 120. Now, the criteria field for a multifamily is slightly different than the criteria field for a residential family. As you can see, you don't have many options. You don't have the options for bedrooms and bathrooms. You know, you don't have different options that you may see in a residential search. On the left, you always have the ability to add additional fields. Now, I want you guys to notice a field that I added, which is total units. Of course, that's really an irrelevant field. I just added it for practice because if I'm asking for a fourplex, then in reality, I should expect four unit properties, right? I mean, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. But guys, don't forget to click on add remove and select any of the additional criteria you'd like to search by. So if lot size is important to you, then look for property square footage. All right, so look, it should be in alphabetical order. And it's not even here. So property square footage is really not in here. Let's see, because I didn't see it in the regular search uh, criteria. So it is not, it is not. All right, so let's say you're looking for zoning information. You want to go ahead and select zoning information, click on add. And now you can click on back and it's going to take you back. So notice here on the right hand side, you do have square feet living area, which is the size of the property itself. And apparently we don't have a search criteria for lot size. Let's just go ahead and check one more time. See if we have any search criteria here for lot size. Go here and let's go to L for lot size. See if we have anything there. Lot square footage, there you go, I had skipped it. So lot square footage, we're gonna go ahead and click on add, click on back. Now we can always tell the system I'm looking for a minimum 10,000 square footage in lot, all right? So make sure that you guys add your additional fields. Of course, your price range, all right? And then number of parking spots. So let's say we want at least four parking spaces. We're gonna put in four plus, all right? Don't put in just four itself. All right, so don't limit yourself to just four, four parking spaces. So four plus, we're left with 99 matches. All right, and then, you know, you want to go ahead and put in a zip code. Let's put in zip code 33145. See if there's anything in that zip code. There's one. Click on results, and here is your fourplex in zip code 33145 with parking spaces. All right, now, if you guys scroll down, you should always see what the potential income is or what the current income is on a property. So the realtor who listed the property tells us that unit number one rents for approximately $1,700 a month. Unit number two, which is a 3-1, rents for $2,100. Unit number three rents for $1,650. And unit number four rents for $2,000. All right, so you want to add all of this up and you want to see what your total amount is. I'm going to show you a little trick here to kind of figure out whether it's a good investment or not. If you add all of these numbers, so let's pick up our calculator here. Now I'm going to round off to the nearest numbers, guys. I'm not going to enter the exact numbers, but here we're going to go ahead and put in 1700 uh, plus 2100 plus 1650 plus 2000. We're looking at a total of 7450 per month times 12. You're looking at 89,400 and this property is being sold for just a, well, a million dollars, right? 999,999, so a million dollars. So the fact is that 
it's a million dollars and our monthly income is about ninety thousand dollars not monthly so our yearly income is about ninety thousand dollars so this is a good investment right this is a good investment you're almost at 10 percent gross income per year now of course after you take out expenses you're going to be somewhere around five or six percent which makes this a good deal all right so we'll discuss that a little later i just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that is your multifamily the easiest type of commercial property that you'll search for all right so if you're looking for commercial land that's going to be cld all right commercial land cld now take a look under additional fields i added a type of property field all right so whether you're looking for income multifamily industrial land you're looking for any uh type of unimproved agricultural or recreational land you're going to select that all right so your commercial land uh industrial can be used for maybe a parking lot right uh you want to park school buses or you anything that has to do with parking vehicles you can look for industrial land agricultural land of course is big farmlands right not to build homes not to build a farm, but big farmlands, you know, so you can grow vegetables, you can grow uh, fruit trees, whatever that may be. So those are the commercial lands, agricultural or even business and industrial that are for sale. All right, guys. So one of the primary uh, criteria fields you're going to see on the right hand side is lot square footage. So how much lot is desired? So if you're looking for 200,000 square feet of land, then you're going to put in here 200,000 and you're going to put in plus. So there are 443 available lots with at least 200,000 square feet. In Miami-Dade County, you're now down to 151. And when you click on results, you're going to see here, right? You're going to see now, you're going to see some lower prices, right? What does this mean? A thousand for rent. So they're renting this desirable rental property on Chrome Avenue, three acres. All right. So a thousand dollars per acre is what they're renting it for. So when you look here, a thousand, that means that it's going to be a thousand dollars per acre and it's per, uh, per month. Okay. Now, when you see a higher price, of course, that may be, that may be that it's for sale. All right. So when you see something like this, $200,000, it's probably going to be for sale. So this is a five acre vacant land near Homestead. All right. And great investment opportunity for the investors and developers. Okay. So guys, again, this is how you would support commercial land. Now let's go into commercial. We're going to spend the majority of our time in this class going through commercial properties. So let's click on COM, which is commercial improved or improved commercial industrial. All right, so on the left-hand side, you guys are gonna find a transaction type. We have a transaction type of lease. So anything that's for lease, you're gonna select lease. And then you have one called for sale, of course, if you're looking to purchase a commercial property. Let's begin with lease. Let's select lease here. Underneath that, we have all of our property types. All of our property types, we have adult congregate, we have anchored centers, we have apartments, we have automotive, anything that has to do with the automotive industry, maybe a, um, you know, repair shop or a body shop, or maybe a gas station, anything with automotive that's for lease, you're going to find it by selecting automotive, building services, building trades, churches, commercial residential income, condominium. These are office condominiums. Consumer services, convenience stores, dock height building. So a dock height building, uh, uh, it's a, you know, maybe a warehouse where the dock is at the same level as a truck when they pull in. There's no ramp necessary, all right? The dock is at the height of the truck. That's a dock height building. Freestanding building, that means it's a standalone building not connected to any other building. That's what freestanding stands for. You got heavy manufacturing. You're also going to see light manufacturing. You have hotels, industrial. That's another word for warehousing. There's your light manufacturing. Malls, marina, medical office, mini warehouse, sort of like a storage space, right? 
Then you have here RVs, mobile parks, and we have office space, office warehouse combination. So if you guys are looking for warehousing and that the warehouse has offices, we're going to choose warehouse office combination. All right. Then we're going to continue on here. We're going to go ahead and take a look. You have a uh, professional service. You have residential multifamily. That's your multifamily five units or more. Restaurants or bars, retail space. So every single property type here, guys, store warehouse combination. So if you're looking for a warehouse that also has a storefront, then you're going to select store warehouse combination. And then there's one warehouse down here called simply just warehouse space. So let's do warehouse space on its own. All right, and then let's go to the city of Doral. All right, we have 18 matches. Now for lease, you're normally going to see the price per square foot. So $17 a square foot for the entire year. That is how you read the price. If you go in here, you're going to see how much is the leasable square footage. Take a look, guys. So we can read the entire thing. It says freestanding building in Doral, 118,449 square feet for lease. All right. It also has offices. Office total is 12,385. So read here. It is a dock height building as well. All right. Of course, standalone. Now, in your listing, Somewhere in your listing, you should always see what the leasable square footage is. And that's going to be right here. Lease square feet, 118,449. Sometimes they are going to be subleasing a section of the warehouse. So if the warehouse itself measures 118,000 square feet, but they're only going to lease you 10,000 square feet, then you should see here under lease square footage, you should see, you should see 10,000. So how much is the monthly rent for this lease? It's going to be $17 times 118,449 divided by 12. So let's do the math. All right, you take out your calculator. We're going to go ahead and multiply $17 uh, times 118,449. And that's $2 million. $2 million divided by 12. You're looking at $167,000 a month to release this warehouse right here. All right, now we move on to the next one. That was a pretty big one. This one here is $18 a square foot and the leasable square footage is now a lot smaller, 21,000 square feet. All right, 21,000 square feet, multiply times 18 divided by 12 and that's gonna be your monthly rent. Okay, take a look here. Rate is $18 per square foot, triple net lease. Available June 24, uh, 2024. Availability is going to be 21,000 square feet, 18,000 square feet warehouse, 1,000 square foot showroom, 2,000 square foot of offices. It's got seven private offices, a conference room, and a 4,500 square foot mezzanine, four dock height doors, one ramp. All right, so it tells you everything. Now, in some cases, real estate agents who enter commercial properties are going to enter the property without giving you much details. All right. Expect that. What they want you to do really is that they want you to call them and ask for more information. All right. Commercial agents pretty much work that way. They're not going to volunteer much information. Now, if you look up here, there is attachments. So sometimes they're going to provide you with a brochure. So this one has a brochure that tells us more about the warehouse. All right, so very nicely done, guys. So that is the attachments here and about this warehouse. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and go back here. Let's show you how to search the same warehouse, but by size. All right, I want you guys to notice here, total acreage, we're not looking for that. Max leasable square footage, maybe you can use that. All right, but you want to go down here to the additional fields and you want to add building square footage. Property square footage is the entire size of the property, the lot size. 
You don't want that. You want building square footage. So make sure that you go, you click on add remove and you add the criteria field for building square footage. So let's say we're looking at a warehouse no more than 10,000 square feet. Let's see if we can find something like that. So no more than 10,000 square feet. We have eight matches in the route. Eight matches, let's click on results. Let's take a look at $22 a square foot. This warehouse comes in at 4,335 square feet. All right, so that's gonna be your rent. 4,335 times $22 divided by 12 and that's going to be your monthly rent here is your 4300 square foot dock height see that's dock height right there the truck can pull right in no ramp necessary and then here's the remaining of the photos for your warehouse slash office space all right any questions on warehousing guys now remember we only select a warehouse what if we want a store warehouse combination then store warehouse combinations under 10,000 square feet in Doral, we're looking at two matches. Click here and let's take a look here. This one is not listed at a dollar per square foot. This one's actually listed at the monthly rent price. So the monthly rent price on this one is 3,094. And here is, I don't see much of a store. What I see is an office. All right, but that's what the, the listing agent put in there. And then this one here. All right. Maybe you can have a store, but uh, they listed it under store warehouse combination. All right, so yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to look through these results and find the perfect result for your client. All right, then of course you do have here uh, office warehouse combination in Doral under 10,000 square feet. We're looking at 18 matches and one more just, uh, to check here, industrial industrial. There are 14 industrial warehouses in Doral under 10,000 square feet. And here is an example. That is an industrial warehouse. All right, so any any questions, guys? Any questions on how to find warehouse space that's available for lease? All right, we don't have any questions, so great. Let's go ahead and continue. We're gonna go ahead and now look for office space. So I'm gonna clear my search here on the left, and we're gonna get a go ahead again and select active, and we're gonna look for office space. So once again, lease. And we're gonna look for office space by selecting office space here. Let's say we want an office in zip code 33134, which is a zip code in Coral Gables. There are 34 possible matches right now. Once again, let's say that your client's looking for a small sized warehouse, building square footage, building square footage, no more than say a thousand square feet. And you're gonna look at nine matches. Make sure you guys add this, it's very important. This is the size of the office space. Results, and here are $21 a square foot all the way up to $2,099 a month. All right, so looking over here, this is an $80, sorry, 80 square foot office. So it's a private office at 2525 Ponce de Leon and it's $21 a square foot and it's $80 or 80 square feet, all right? And this is what you're gonna be leasing. Obviously you wanna go ahead and go bigger, then you're gonna go here to one of these and select, all right? This one here is $2,099 a month for this office space you'll see here. So I recently had a client that was looking for office space to open an insurance agency and they needed to be at least one mile apart from uh, any competitor uh, competitor insurance agency. Well, obviously you can't really do that on the MLS, but you can find them the property and then go ahead and type in, you know, in, in Google Maps or something, the nearest um say state farm insurance agency to that address. And if it's at a mile or more, then that's an acceptable 
property for your client. All right. So the MLS is not going to really help you do that. You can identify the nearest properties to uh to to this result, but you're gonna have to do some additional research through Google or other um apps. All right. Let's go back to criteria, guys. Let's go ahead and now pretend that we're looking to purchase a property. All right. So we're going to go ahead and clear my search and go ahead and click on active again. This time, let's go for sale. All right. So if we're looking to purchase apartment buildings, you have here 105 apartment buildings. I ask you to also combine apartment buildings with residential multifamily. So come down here look for residential multifamily and select it. So if you have investors looking for larger multifamily properties, you're going to go with residential multifamily and apartment buildings. All right, let's go to Miami-Dade County and let's stay under $2 million. So $2 million or less. We're looking at 42 available units in all of Miami-Dade County. Now, I want you guys to go ahead and take a look. I'm going to click on results, and these are my results right here. All right, I'm going to show 100 per page so we can see all of my results in one page. Now, of course, you, you're you going to go into each, and each listing shall tell you how many units are in that building. All right, so taking a look here, it's going to tell you extraordinary investment opportunity in Alapato. All right, so uh, this one is not really telling us how many units are in this building. All right, and I know that because you see how it's blank right here. They're not telling us how many units, although you can clearly see right there. Now, in the remarks, sometimes they'll tell you. So I'm looking for it. This is an eight unit building. So the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because you think that we can search, we can add a criteria so we can search by number of units desired. But a lot of realtors who enter listings in the MLS that are commercial may forget to enter the number of units. So we have 42, right, multifamily properties under $2 million. If I go back to criteria, I want to show you. If I go back to criteria, and I go here to the additional fields and I add the additional field called number of units. And I go, show me eight, right? We have two matches. Hit results. Well, the listing agent here absolutely answered the question, how many units? Eight. But remember the one we just saw also had eight units? It doesn't show up in these results. It doesn't show up in these results. Only the listing agents who provided the correct number of units in the listing. All right. Will I see those results when I ask for eight unit buildings? All right. So you are going to have to go through each result and kind of look and see which ones have eight units. Because the reality is we have way more results than what we just saw by indicating eight units. All right, so I see a question here. If a client asks you for a warehouse with a minimum ceiling of 16 feet and less than two miles from I-95, well, we can actually do the, 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 the distance from I-95. That's for sure. And you can also go with ceiling height as well. So let's, um, I'll get back to that warehouse question, uh, Fritz, um, after, after I finish here on the multifamily. Is that okay? All right. So guys, just make sure that you know that if you are trying to search by number of units, yes, I may be able to put in here 10, and guess what? All right. Any results I get, any results I get are going to be valid. All right. Let's remove this price here. Let's remove $2 million. So we have two units that are 10 exactly units, right? We have two units that have 10 uh, units in the property. 
I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more, but not every realtor is going to enter the 10 units, guys. Now, a property like this may tell you how many units are rented and at what price. Or they're going to not include this. And we're going to have to call the listing agent and find out more information. Sometimes in the financials, they'll tell you, right? In the financial information, they'll tell you what the gross scheduled income is, what your expenses are. Or sometimes they're going to share a PDF file as an attachment with your income on the property. Okay, so of course, there's going to be much more uh, due diligence to a property like this, making sure that this is a great investment for your customers. Guys, stay tuned. We are going to learn how to run comparisons or look for comps for commercial properties. All right. So let's go back here, guys, to criteria. That's your apartment multifamily, uh, apartment buildings or multifamilies you're going to search for in the MLS that are for sale. You can search for any property type. You know, if you've got someone looking for a church, you're going to go to church here. And let me just remove the number of units. See how many churches we have available in Miami-Dade County. There are 16 churches that are for sale in Miami-Dade County. All right. If you select here, let's go for restaurants. See if there's any restaurant bar that's for sale. There are 26 restaurants or bars that are for sale in Miami-Dade County. All right. So you guys will search that way. Now let's go back to the question that was just asked in the, um, in the chat. So we're going to switch it over to lease and we're going to go ahead and select warehouse space. Okay. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to go ahead and click on add remove. Here's the thing, uh, Fritz. If the agent who listed the property provides the information you just mentioned, then we can search for it by ceiling height. If the agent doesn't provide the information, then unfortunately, it's going to make it much more difficult. So come over here to the additional fields and you want to go ahead and add ceiling height, ceiling description, interior ceiling height. Click on add. Let's just add both. Let's add both to ceiling description. All right. So let's go ahead and put in ceiling description and then let's also put in max ceiling height. All right, so let's give this a try. Let's give this a try. Come over here and let's take a look at interior ceiling height, 16 plus. All right, we need 16 plus. See that? All right, see that? So warehouse space. Let's go with store warehouse combination. Let's go with office warehouse combination. Let's just make sure, guys. That's uh, ten, zero matches. If I come here and I put 10 plus, it just it's, it isn't a field that people are using when, when uploading a, a warehouse. Let's take a look real quick here. All right. Um, let's take a look. So I'm going to come here. Let's click here. Somewhere in this, you would see ceiling height. And it is not populated. All right. So taking a look at all the property characteristics, somewhere in here, you're going to see here ceiling. And it's not populated. So unfortunately, the answer is technically you can search by ceiling height, but it's not going to be possible because it just isn't a required field when entering a listing in the MLS. All right. I, I don't work for the MLS. So... I don't have the power to make the changes. We can always recommend, right? We can always talk to the MLS and recommend that they make this a required field. But as of now, it is not a required field. All right. Then, of course, guys, I mean, if you want to search close to I-95, you know, you're going to go back to criteria and you're going to go here to search and you can go up and down I-95 and just draw yourself a two mile radius, right? I mean, come here. 
And let's say you wanted to do, I draw a circle, right? And I go from here to here. So that right there, that line right there is about two miles. So I can just draw something like this. Watch. I can just draw a rectangular shape like this. All right, so there's 985 going right down the middle, and we know that this is a two-mile radius like that, and you can go take this as north as you want, okay? Now, another way that you guys can search by, by distance, of course, is if you enter an address, right? I'm going to go ahead and clear these shapes. I'm going to clear these shapes if you want to enter an address here. Say for 245 Alcazar Avenue, I just want to give you an example. All right, so you enter an address that's going to put in here a PIN number. And that is not what I'm looking for. Why did it pull up a Fort Myers address? All right, let me go here to the map once again. Jump to... No, let's do something here. Uh, sale or lease. Well, let's go with office space real quick. And uh, let's click on results. And then let's click on map. And come here, jump to address 245 Alcazar Ave. All right. Why is it going to Fort Myers? <laughs> Weird. Uh, let's put in a uh, wow. Why is it going in 1600 fonts? De Leon Boulevard. There it is. Coral Gables. All right. So once you find a location like this, right? Once you find a location like this, you can always. Say, all right, I need to be two miles from that location. Go ahead and grab a, a radius and just stretch out a radius of two miles, all right? Stretch out a radius of two miles like this. And you can find yourself a warehouse or an office space within a two mile radius of 1600 Ponce de Leon Boulevard. All right, you would do it that way. All right, guys, so commercial search, COM, all types of commercial properties are going to be found in there for lease or for sale. Let's go ahead and go into business brokerage. Business brokerage allows us to look for properties that are like, uh, not properties, but businesses that are for sale. So you have a style of business here, automotive, all right, 83 matches, bar lounge only. 48 matches, beauty, barbershop, 131 matches. Go down the list. What is it you're looking for? Also, you can use the type of business. So let me remove barbershop right here and go here to type of business. If you're looking for a liquor store, of course, you can just come up here to the style of business and see if there's a liquor store available here. There should be if there isn't. Then we're going to come down here and I, I am just double checking, right? And we're going to enter liquor. Here's the reason why I went with liquor store, because you'll notice here, style of business, liquor store was not available. Now, by entering liquor by itself, type of business, you still get zero matches. But watch this, guys. Put an asterisk at the end of the word liquor. Now there are seven matches. So you click on results and these are your liquor stores that are for sale. We Here we have one in Miami. They, they do not give you the exact address. They don't want you to go and bother uh, anyone that may be working there at that time, right? So for privacy reasons, and here's your liquor store that's for sale. Read the remarks because sometimes the inventory is included. Sometimes the inventory is not included. In this case, merchandise inventory is approximately $130,000 and it is not included in the sale. Also read correctly the remarks. 
Sometimes the property itself is also included in the sale, meaning that you're buying the liquor store plus the property where it is located. In most cases, you're just buying the business and you're going to continue to pay rent to the landlord. Like this, you guys can find any restaurant business that's for sale. You know, you have a restaurant owner who's retiring or they just want to sell their business. You're going to come here and you're going to look for an operating restaurant. Let's remove the type of business. Guys, the asterisk at the end of the word makes the search value as contains. Contains a liquor store. So that's why by putting liquor by itself, I didn't get any results. But the moment I put an asterisk at the end of the word liquor, now we're looking at contains a liquor store. All right, so much better to do. And then, you know, you have all of these other, um, you know, options. All right, so gas station. You know, if you're looking for a gas station, gas by itself, zero. Asterisk, and you are up to 11. And these are your gas stations. These are your gas station businesses. You come here and they're selling this business for $995,000. They should tell you more details of the property there. All right. So yearly net profit, uh, almost $400,000, $390,000 in profit, 20 years remaining on their lease, very high traffic corridor. All right. And uh, you know, it tells you about the inside convenience store, lotto, uh, net profit, things of that nature. All right. All right, guys. So I'm going to transition into IMAP real quick here. So let's open up IMAP because it is important for us to know how to look up commercial properties on IMAP. Now, if you guys have noticed, IMAP does have a beta version or a new version. I like to use a new version. So let's go ahead and click there. Use the new version. I'm going to go ahead and click on it twice. All right. Um, I am now inside of IMAP, which is a public record system. It's a great tool for us to research any type of property, residential or commercial, and run quick comparisons on any type of property as well. You can also use IMAP for prospecting, looking down here at property use code. All right. On the right, you can search for multifamily, 10 units or more, multifamily, 10 units or less, vacant land, commercial. You have one story stores. So stores, one story. You have your mixed use store and office space, department stores, shopping centers, office building, one story, office building, multiple stories, restaurants, every single item or property type is in here if you want to search for it. Now, if you already know the address of the property, we're gonna go ahead and enter the address of the property here. So for property address, we're gonna go ahead and enter an address of a property. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that the property we're entering is an office space. All right, so we enter 245 Alcazar Avenue, this is an office space here in Coral Gables. All right, so you're going to take a look here and you're going to see that the last time this property was sold, all right, was back in 1994. All right, that was the last time it was sold, 1994. There was a quick claim deed, all right, uh, done in 2023, December of 2023. We don't see the quick claim deed. Uh, we don't see here, but we do see a document number. Now, if you guys want to run comps, this is a 4,889 square foot office space in Coral Gables. We're going to go on the right hand side and we're going to take a look. Find comparables. All right. So the comps are going to be using the criteria of a 20% difference on lot size, a 20% difference in interior size located within one mile. You can go up to five miles or you can go in the same subdivision. It all really depends on how many comps you can find or how many comps you need to find. You can go one year, two years. You can go 18 months. And everything else is pretty much for residential. So with this criteria that I just entered, we did find one similar office that sold 
within the last year. And this is 245 Alcazar Avenue. It is a one-story office space. All right, it is a one-story office space in Coral Gables. And we found another one-story office space right over here. And that one sold for $2,160,000. It is slightly smaller at 4,409 square feet. So the fact is that the office space we are studying is larger at 4,889 square feet, giving us a higher value of $2,395,000 uh, for the subject property based on that sale right there. Now, if we want to stretch this out, maybe go two miles and click on update criteria. Do we have any other comps? We do not. What if we go and we do same zip code, the entire zip code of 33134 update criteria. So the reality is we still only have one sale in the entire zip code. I'm going to do one more last check. Let's go ahead and do two years update criteria. Still only one sale. All right. What's the reason behind this? Well, maybe not many sales have occurred. Another thing you guys can do is ignore the lot square footage. Ignore the lot square footage. Click on update criteria. We did pick up another one right here. All right. And that one is this one over here in Coral Gables. That one sold for $3,350,000. And it's got an interior space, which is smaller. And you have a lot space, which is also smaller. All right. So now we're looking anywhere between $2.4 million and $4 million with an average of 3.2. This is just one way to search for comps for a commercial space. Now I'm going to go here to the MLS. And we're going to go here to commercial search and let's do a um, fourplex. Let's do a fourplex and let's go to zip code 33135 or 34. Let's go 33134. And let's look at this fourplex right here. If you guys want to run comps on a fourplex like this, you can just go ahead and click on IMAP. See IMAP right there? We're going to select it. Now that we selected IMAP, on the right-hand side, you're going to click on Find Comparables. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust our criteria once again. We're going to go and do a one mile radius in the last year. And we're going to click on update criteria. So within the last year in Coral Gables, there are three comps that are multifamily. And that gives our property a value anywhere from 1.6 to almost $2.2 million with an average of 1 million what is the asking price? One million five eighty. All right, so not a bad deal at one million five eighty if the comps are between one point six million dollars and two point two million dollars with an average of one point nine. You have here a one million nine twenty five sale, a one million seven twenty five sale, and a one million five fifty sale. Okay, so these are the three comps. However, looking at all three comps, what size are they? 3,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet, and 3,268. Our subject property is slightly larger, coming in at 3,500 square feet. That's why we get higher prices. We get higher prices because our we're making the adjustments for our larger property. All right. It's not always going to be this easy, guys. You are going to sometimes have to stretch out to two miles, three miles, or even the same zip code. You know, when you're looking at warehousing or you're looking for restaurants or office space and you want to uh, run comps on the property, you may have to stretch your search on the distance. All right. So a property like this, how can we... Analyze the potential returns. First and foremost, let's go back to the MLS. It is listed at $1,580,000. All right. And then let's see if they're telling us how much income is producing. 
So this four unit multifamily gem, all right, invites all investors. And taking a look here in the financials, they're not telling us how much income it's producing. And there are no, there are no, um, no PDFs, right? No PDFs on this. So I'm going to go back here to IMAP and let's click on property tax real quick. Wow, it's a lot of sales history for this property. Wait a minute. Wow. It's a huge sales history for this property. This is a four unit building with six bedrooms and four bathrooms. All right, so what we see here is that we have four bathrooms. So each unit has one bathroom and there are gonna be two units that have two bedrooms and two units that have one bedroom, right? Making it six total bedrooms. Let's say we went ahead and we called the realtor and the realtor tells us that the one ones were renting for $1,800 and the two ones were renting for $2,400. All right, let's just say, for instance, we call the realtor and those are the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my calculator. And there are two one ones and each was renting for eighteen hundred dollars. So that's thirty six hundred dollars total. And then we have two two ones and each of those were renting for twenty four hundred dollars. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add another forty eight hundred to that total. And we're looking at a total monthly income here of $8,400. The reason why I did this is because we're gonna need to know this number, right? We're gonna need to know this number. Now, find the RPR logo. This is RPR right here, all right? Also, inside of your resource panel, this is RPR right here. Okay, so just know that there's many ways for us to access RPR, even from inside of IMAP. Looking over here on the right-hand side, this is our PR right there. Many ways for us to access our PR. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just go through the MLS and click on our PR. Let's go back because there is a result. You know, sometimes it doesn't link correctly. And we're linking up to the property right now. Okay, so here's the property. The one tool I want to teach you today is how to analyze the potential returns on this investment. So for that, we're gonna go here to the right-hand side and we're gonna look for Valuate. Let's look for the Valuate tool, here it is. Under additional resources, you're gonna click on Valuate. And we're gonna click on Continue. All right, so now we're about to evaluate a uh, fourplex, right? A multifamily fourplex. So the purchase price, we're gonna leave it just like that. 1,580,000, right? Full price offer. Four units, the potential gross income. So we mentioned it was $8,400 a month. Now we're gonna multiply that times 12. It's $100,800. So $100,800 is your monthly, no, sorry, your yearly potential income based on the rents that we're charging each unit. Now, what are your operating expenses? Beginning with taxes. Go back to the MLS. All right, take a look and see if the taxes are given to you here. Tax amount, nearly $17,000. So we're gonna pull out our calculator and start adding $17,000 in taxes. Insurance on a, on a building like this is probably gonna be somewhere around $8,000. Again, these that's just an estimate. So insurance on a building like this, probably around um, $8,000. Now, rent includes lawn care, trash removal, and water. So we have to pay the water for the building. There are four units. I'm going to estimate water being at $400 a month. $400 a month. And then you're going to multiply that times 12. That's another $4,800. So now we're looking at a total of $29,800. We're also going to have to account for lawn care. All right. So um, let me take a look at the lawn, the landscaping. So there's plenty of landscaping that needs to be taken care of. All right. Plenty of landscaping. So um, 
would you say landscaping would cost us about a thousand a month? All right, just to just to play it safe, a thousand a month. That's a little too much, right? Let's go with eight hundred a month. So eight hundred a month times twelve. We're looking at ninety six hundred dollars, and that's on top of the twenty nine thousand eight hundred that we we had already calculated. So now we're at a total of almost forty thousand dollars in expenses. All right, almost forty thousand dollars in expenses. Now I pretty much went a little high on the landscaping, but there is a lot of landscaping that needs to be done. I mean, we need to make sure these trees are cut, make sure all of this is cut, maybe cut the grass. Uh, so there's some maintenance. All right, so eight hundred dollars a month seems fair. Now it also lets you save reserves. So I normally would like to put away about one month out of every year in reserves. So this thing, if this property is making about eight thousand dollars a month, then I'm gonna put away another eight thousand. So the total expenses here are gonna be $48,000. That's expenses and reserves, okay? We're purchasing this property December 1st. We're gonna hold it for 10 years and we're gonna take out a 70% loan. That's what loan to value stands for, all right? We're gonna take out a 70% loan. My interest rate's gonna be a little higher than that. Let's go with interest rate 6.5. All right, when you're ready, you want to click on submit. So we went ahead and let's recap before we hit submit. We went ahead and said that we're uh, making a full price offer on a four unit building that's generating $100,800 in income every single year. After expenses of $48,000, we're looking at a uh, 10 year loan or not 10 year, but not 10 year loan, but a 10 year period for our study. And we're looking at a 70% loan, so 30% down at a 6.5% interest rate. Click on submit. Let's take a look at the numbers. All right. Do the numbers make sense? So to my eye, all right, they're a little low. I mean, we're talking an internal rate of return if you buy it in cash of 4%. It's not even 5%. So to me, that looks a little low. And if you're financing, it's even worse on this one, 2.7% uh, internal rate of return. And we're looking at a negative cash flow of 2.5%, meaning that you have to put out of pocket every single month in order to come up with your 2.7% uh, gains every year. So what threw these values off? Maybe the price, the purchase price, maybe the fact that we're spending eight hundred dollars a month in youth in uh in, in maintenance, maybe the fact that the water at eight thousand dollars uh you know a year was a little too much. Insurance, taxes, you know, all of that put together. Now we can maybe improve this by going to purchase and sale and saying, well, you know what? The property is not $1.5 million. This property should sell for $1.2 million. So we offer $1.2 million. And now your numbers are going to improve drastically. Now we're looking at uh, an internal rate of return, if you buy in cash, of 7.7%. So that's greater than 5 That's a really good deal. And then if you are going to finance, you're really making a nice return. You're making 10% returns off of your initial investment, right? Your initial investment was the 30%, right? The 30% down payment. So you're making uh, a really good return on your initial investment. Of course, we need to get that property down to $1.2 million. All right, so... Learn how to kind of work these numbers, present this to your clients, um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, obviously help them buy a property. Okay. You can do this kind of study for any type of property using RPR. Just look for the property in the MLS, click on the RPR logo, 
once the RPR lo uh, RPR opens the property, go here to the right hand side, locate the valuate tool, and you want to run the investment analysis through RPR. All right, guys. We have RPR classes for you, Realtors Property Resource classes. We have investment classes for you. All of these classes, you guys can find them in my YouTube channel. All right, so whether you're looking to work with an investor, have the perfect class for you. And there it is, finding investment properties. If you're looking to um, learn about RPR or learn about any system or any document or contract, go to our YouTube channel, you'll find all these videos in here. All right, guys. So any questions before we end our program for today? All right, no questions. You guys have been uh, pretty quiet. There's quite a few of you in our class. All right, so if there's no other questions, I wanna thank all our guests that were with us today. And then of course, our team members, thank you so much for joining us for our commercial MLS training. I hope that you truly picked up on a few uh, tips and that you can use them for your commercial MLS usage. Guys, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day.